Fellas, I'm going to be predicting the most recent title challenger in a fight against the next title challenger. So the person who just fought for the belt in every single weight class and fell short. Going against the person who's going to be facing for the belt next in every weight class. There's a lot of fights on here that we've never seen. There's a lot of fights on here that I've never even thought about. And there's a lot of fun fights on here that I think are quite interesting. And if they were to play out, I'd actually want to see them. So we're going to be going for every weight class. The most recent title challenger against the next title challenger. And I know not every single title challenger in the future has been announced. You know, there's just some obvious ones that you can go for and then some that you kind of have to use logic for. So we're going to be predicting every single one of these fights as well as matchmaking them against each other. And we'll start with the heavyweight division. Obviously, the most recent title challenger being Cyril Gone, which, by the way, is crazy. Cyril Gone fought John Jones in March of 2023, and he's still the most recent title challenger in the heavyweight division. I find that crazy. But he'd be taking on Stipe Miocic, who obviously, it's very likely that he's going to be taking on John Jones next. The UFC seemed to be going in that direction. My prediction for this fight is Cyril gone by TK on the fourth round. Stipe Miocic, he's kind of like an old dog who needs to be put down. The UFC are just trying to squeeze any sort of stardom they can get out of Stipe before he retires. Um, and I've picked round four rather than any early because Cyril Gon's not really a KO artist. He's not really known for knocking people out. He's known for breaking people down with his elite striking round after round, like he did with Tati Bivalza and Sergei Spivak. I don't think Cyril Gon would just go in there and blast him and finish him in the first round. I think it would take a bit of time. And round after round, the damage would start adding up. And around that fourth round, that's when Stipe Miocic should probably get finished. I can see Cyril Gon backing him against a cage, teeing off on him, and just just out striking and this is one of those fights where it's kind of like the new generation of heavyweights against the old generation of heavyweights Stipe, it's not even like it's a, the prime Stipe ever. I mean, he's been out for four years. He didn't look great against Ngannou. Got KO'd by him and has just been laying off, sitting out. And I'm not going to act like Cyril Gon's the most active heavyweight either. He's on average like fighting once, maybe twice a year. Um, but yeah, I'd probably go, I'd definitely go with Cyril Gon to win this fight. Stipe, he's got good boxing and he had decent wrestling in his prime. But how that looks four years after. And I assume that Cyril Gon must have improved his wrestling somewhat. I mean, if you haven't improved your wrestling, you may as well just quit from the UFC. I'm, I'm hoping he's learned after the fights with Jones and the fight with Ngannou to improve his wrestling a little bit. And he looked decent against Sergei Spivak. So I'd go Cyril Gaunt to just break him down round after round and get a finish in the fourth round. I think there's very few heavyweights to actually lose to Stipe Miocic. I mean, I know the heavyweight division is an uncompetitive division, um, which is saying a lot. But uh, yeah, I'd go Cyril Gaunt, TKO in the fourth round. Um, I just think he's much better than Stipe, even though Stipe might be stylistically a more difficult fight for John Jones because I'd say he's a lot more well-rounded than Cyril Gaon. I'd still go for Cyril Gaon to beat Stipe. Yeah, like I said, there's just very few heavyweights in the world that would probably lose to Stipe in 2024. The light heavyweight division, this is a fight that I would love to see and a fight that could actually happen. Yuri Prohaska versus Magomed Ankalaev. Now, obviously, Yuri's just fought for the battle against uh, against Alex Pereira, and it seems like Ankalaev is next in line, then he should be next in line. This is a really difficult one to predict, but I would probably go with a Magomed Ankalaev by a decision. I think this would be an absolute war. The thing is, it's really difficult because Yuri Prohaska, he's got this really awkward striking style which seems to work. It worked in that first fight with Alex Pereira and it's worked in every single one of his other fights. He beat Glover to share it in a really impressive fight. His run up to the title was impressive. He's just really awkward, whereas Ankalaev is also a pretty good striker. I know he's got the threat of the takedown, which I'm sure would factor into this fight, but he's also a, a more technical striker than Yuri. The way that he knocked out Johnny Walker, the way that he looked against Jan Blachowicz, and obviously the main talking point for Ankalaev is the wrestling background that he has. Yuri's a good grappler. He's Submitted Glover to Sherry. He's got decent jujitsu. But without a doubt, Ankle Live's definitely the superior grappler. So I think this would actually be a really close fight. And I wouldn't be I wouldn't be picking Ankle Live with confidence. It's a really difficult one to predict. But the way that I've been seeing them both recently, you've just got to go with Ankle Live. He seems like the more sharp striker. I'm not saying he's a better striker. He just seems a lot more sharp. He's got the grappling base. He's looked good in nearly every single one of his fights, and I probably would have picked him to... I know the fight with Jan Blachowicz was a draw, but I probably would have favoured him to beat Jan Blachowicz. If the judges' scorecard went one way, I would have gone to Ankalaev. Yuri's just been KO'd by Alex Pereira. I think he's got too much of a risky style to face a guy as dangerous as Ankalaev. And even though I think this would be an absolute banger, which is why I haven't picked anyone to win by finish, I would have to go with Ankalaev to win this one by decision. Um, but I think it'll be a back and forth one. I hope we do see this fight one day. If Ankalaev can beat Pereira, or Pereira moves up to heavyweight or whatever, and we ever see this fight, sign me up because I think this would be a really fun clash of styles. Ankalaev, Yuri. I mean, any fight that involves Yuri Prohaska is going to be fun no matter who you put him against. But yeah, I'd probably go Ankalaev to win this one by decision. 
Then we've got Sean Strickland versus Israel Adesanya. Now, this is one of the few fights on this list that first, I mean, we've seen it before, and we could actually see it again. If Adesanya beats Drikas Duplessis, um, and obviously Strickland's just fought Drikas, and Drikas, because he's beaten Costa, it seems like if Adesanya beats Drikas, this could be next in line. Uh, Adesanya versus Strickland too. I'm going to go with Sean Strickland to win this bomb by decision. I've heard a lot of people saying that, oh, it was a fluke. It wasn't a fluke. It was a five-round beating. And then there's been people that are saying that Adesanya didn't take Sean Strickland uh, seriously, which is the reason why he lost. I think Sean Strickland would give this dude another five-round All-American beating. People saying that Adesanya didn't take him seriously. Adesanya looks like this in nearly every fight. He looked like that against Jared Cannonier. He looked like that against Marvin Vittori. He looked like that against Yoel Romero. I think Sean Strickland just has his number. There are some people that are just stylistic nightmares. And Adesanya has met that guy in Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland is just a really difficult st style for Adesanya to overcome. I think Sean Strickland would do exactly what he did in the first fight. He'd walk forward, land some good shots. I think he'd survive all the counters. Obviously, I think their game plans would be a little bit different in this fight. I think Adesanya would be focused more on circling rather than just backing up and I think he would try and focus on landing those big counters more. Um, and I think Sean Strickland would probably be cautious and would probably be looking out for those counters. I mean, you look at Adesanya against Pereira. Pereira won the first fight and he was able to bet Pereira in the second based on the first fight. So maybe Adesanya is going to come with a new game plan. But I would pick Strickland to win again. I just, I don't understand why anyone would pick Adesanya to win the rematch. People saying that he didn't take Strickland seriously. He, I don't think I saw any different in Adesanya in this fight than I do in most fights, to be honest. And Strickland, maybe Strickland's not as bad as people are making him out to be. People need to give Strickland more credit for his wins. He's beaten Paulo Costa. He beat Abbas Magomedov. He beat, I, he, I think he should have beaten Jared. Kananiya. Um, he beat Imovov as well. He beat Adesanya himself. Strickland's one of the best in the world. I feel like when, when at first when Strickland beat Adesanya, a lot of people were calling it a fluke, but I think we've got to accept it's not a fluke. Strickland's just that good. So I would go Sean Strickland to win this one by decision. Maybe a couple of things would change here and there from both of them going into the rematch. Adesanya would definitely have to change a few things, but I would still go with Sean Strickland. Unless Adesanya does something crazy against Drikas, which changes my mind, I'm going to go for Sean Strickland to win this one by a decision again. Then we have Colby Covington versus Bilal Muhammad. Obviously, Covington just fought for the belt. Bilal is going to be facing Leon next week. Um, probably not going to be the most entertaining fight, can, you know, comparing their styles. But I would go Bilal Muhammad to win this one by decision. I see, and I've said this for a while, I see Bilal Muhammad is a better version of Colby Covington. They're both good wrestlers, but I feel like Bilal Muhammad's way better at managing pressure and applying pressure. Colby Covington was backing up against Leon Edwards. They didn't want anything to do with him. And Leon was able to out-wrestle Covington at, at times. And on the feet, Bilal Muhammad's better striker than Covington. Covington's a really mid striker and I'm not going to act like Bilal Muhammad's world class kickboxer or anything like that but he outstruck Gilbert Burns. Even if he, Gilbert Burns was injured there ain't no way Corby's out striking him and he finished Sean Brady on the feet. I think this fight would take place on the feet for the majority of the fight. I don't know if Corby Covington would be pushing a, a grappling pace. I don't know if Bilal Muhammad would. I think both of them would be quite tentative to engage in grappling and on the feet I would have to favour Bilal Muhammad to win this one. He seems to be a lot more hungry. He seems to be you know wanting this title shot a lot more. Corby Colby Covington, he got gifted a title shot against Leon Edwards and then did nothing for the entire fight. It was just a pile of shit. And I'm not, not going to act like Bilal Muhammad, you know, he's this extremely high-pressure fighter. Well, he is high-pressure, but high-entertaining fighter. But out of the two of them, Bilal Muhammad's definitely more hungry. And he's beaten a lot better people recently than Colby Covington. You look at Colby Covington's wrestler, uh, resume, a lot of them are just old fighters, so... I'd go Bilal Muhammad to win this one by decision. I think he'd piece Colby Covington up on the feet. Covington did not look good against Leon Edwards in any aspect of the you know, MMA. And I don't know why he would do against Bilal Muhammad when it comes to wrestling either. I think Bilal Muhammad's better than Covington. I would go with Bilal Muhammad to beat Colby Covington by a decision. In fact, there's probably few welterweights right now in the top 10 that I would pick to, to lose to Colby Covington. Maybe a couple of the guys at the, you know, the lower end of the rankings. But a lot of the top welterweights these days would destroy Colby Covington. Hence why he's not fighting anyone. So I'd pick. Bilal Muhammad to win this one by decision. Dustin Poirier versus Armand Sarukin. Obviously, Poirier just lost to Makachev, and it seems like Armand Sarukin is going to be facing Makachev at UFC 308. Yeah, this should be... Um, I, I, I would probably have to go with Armand Sarukin to win by submission in the fourth round, fifth round, around that area. I would see this going very similar to Dustin Poirier versus Islam Makachev, except maybe it's not as dominant from Armand Sarukin. Armand Sarukin's a really, really good wrestler, which is going to, you know, obviously factor into this fight. He's just not as good as Makachev. He's a really good striker as well. He's got dangerous hands. He's just not as good as Makachev. So I feel like it would be just a closer version of Poirier versus Makachev. But ultimately, I do think Armand Sarukin would find 
and the submission. One thing I like about Armin Saruki when he grapples is he, he likes to use ground and pound a lot. He's not just one of these grapplers that takes you down, looks for the submission, then when he doesn't find the submission, he's a fish out of water. He's got really good ground and pound. I think Poirier would definitely be landing the better shots on the feet. He wouldn't want to engage in a scrap with Saruki, but I think he'd be landing the better shots on the feet. But I think ultimately, Saruki would be taking him down, holding him down for the majority of the fight. Um, he looked good against Charles Oliveira, who was one of the best in the world at the time, and he still is, to be fair. But I would go Armand Sharukin. I think it would be a fairly competitive four rounds with maybe Armand Sharukin just about taking them just because of his grappling. And then eventually, I can definitely see Sharukin latching up a submission, maybe damaging Poirier with ground and pound, and from there gets a submission. Um, yeah, Poirier, he, listen, he's still one of the top guys, and he's a dangerous guy for anyone. We saw that two fights ago when he faced Benoit Saint Denis. But I just think Sarukian, I think he's the number one guy in the world. I said this in a video earlier, uh, a couple of days ago, that this kind of reminds me of Kamar Usman and Corby Covington. Kamar Usman is obviously in this situation, Islam Makachev, the, the unbe unbeatable champion. And then Armand Sarukin's the Corby Covington of that division, or the Volkanovski in the Holloway, where Armand Sarukin's the Holloway, where he's always going to be the number one guy, doesn't beat the champion, but beats everyone else. I'd go Sarukin to win by submission the fourth. And then Volkanovski versus Max Holloway. It's pretty much been confirmed that Holloway is going to be taken on Taporia at UFC 306. And I already know what everyone's going to say. Everyone's going to be saying Max Holloway wins. I'm going Volkanovski by decision. I already know the narrative if this fight was to ever happen again. Oh, Volkanovski's washed. He's on a two-fight losing streak. He's been finished. He doesn't have it anymore. Holloway's coming off a, a performance of a lifetime against Justin Gaethje. He just KO'd him. I understand why people are leaning towards Max Holloway. But there are some people, and this is similar to the Strickland Adasanya situation, that just have your number. I think Volkanovski would beat Max Holloway again. He's beaten Max Holloway three different times, with the third one and the most recent one being the most decisive. I'd, I'd go Volkanovski to win this one. Volkanovski's losses, fair enough, he is on a two-fight losing streak, and I wouldn't say he's as dominant as the third fight. I think this would definitely be closer than the third fight that he had. But I would go for Volkanovski to win this one. Holloway looked really good against Justin Gaethje, but that doesn't translate to the fact that he had a couple of fights ago when he faced Volkanovski and got absolutely battered. I'd go Volkanovski to win again. I think stylistically, it's an absolute nightmare for Holloway. And that doesn't mean I'm picking Holloway to lose to Taporia, by the way. MMMF doesn't work. I still think Holloway would probably beat Taporia, even though that's a really close fight as well. But I would go Volkanovski to win. From what we've seen already, unless Volkanovski goes on like a massive losing streak, he loses to one of a featherweight or, you know, goes on like a massive downward spiral... I'm still picking Volkanovski to win this one. Not as dominant as the third one, but I'd go Volkanovski to win. Holloway, his best chance might be now, but I think in any world, any universe, the best chance that Holloway had of beating Volkanovski was in that second fight. I'm going Volkanovski by decision. Marlon Vera versus Marab. Yeah, obviously, Vera's just faced O'Malley. Marab, I think he might be facing O'Malley on the co-main event of 306, or he might be 307. He's going to be facing O'Malley later this year anyway. Um, yeah, I'd go Marab by submission in the second round. I think this would be an easy fight for Marab. In fact, this is probably the easiest fight for Marab in the top 10 right now, because Marlon Vera can't grapple. He's facing the best grappler in the division. Marab would absolutely dominate Marlon Vera. We saw how he beat Peter Yan and Cejudo with grappling. Imagine what he would do to Marlon Vera, who's arguably the worst grappler in the division. Marab would absolutely ragdoll Marlon Vera in this fight. It wouldn't even be fair. I think he'd take him down. And even though Marab's not even that much of a submission artist, when you watch Marab fight, it's not like he goes for these submissions a lot. I mean, in his last three fights, he hasn't been able to latch up a submission. But to be fair... All of those guys have been much better grapplers than Marlon Vera. Marab would take him down, find the submission within a few rounds, and he would submit Marlon Vera, and that's all there is to it. I don't even think on the feet Vera would have much to offer, because Marab's an extremely fast starter, and Marlon Vera's an extremely slow starter. Like, Marlon Vera gets better as the fight progresses. Marab ain't giving him an opportunity to do that. His stamina is insane. Marab's good for the full five rounds, and it ain't going to be five rounds, because he's going to submit him in the second. Marab, submission in the second round. And then we have Steve Versek versus Makayev. Now, I don't actually know who's going to be facing Pantoja next. I've kind of just gone for Makayev because I think it's going to be the winner of Makayev and Manel Cap. I know there's been a lot of names floating around. Some people have said Kai Asakura, the new Japanese star. I don't know who's going to be facing him next. But I'll go with Makayev, assuming that it's going to be Makayev because it's a fresh matchup. Steve Versek versus Makayev. I think Steve, Versek ra Steve Versek's ranking doesn't really display how good he is. I think he's the top three best in the division right now based on his performance against Pantoja. I'd go Steve Versig by TKO in the fifth round. I think Steve Versig's better than Makayev in nearly every aspect. Okay, maybe Makayev has better wrestling than Steve Versig, 
but Makayev has not impressed me in any of his recent fights. Steve Ursig is a really good wrestler. Maybe his submission needs a bit of work, but he's a really good wrestler. In fact, he, I think he comes from a wrestling background, and he's probably the most slick boxer in the division with great counters. Mohamed Makayev has a heavy wrestling pace, but on the feet, this dude is nothing. Any strike and exchange, he shoots for a takedown. I think Steve Verseg would batter Mohamed Makayev for four rounds and then eventually get the TKO. I just don't see where Mohamed Makayev can even pose a threat to Steve Verseg. From what we saw with Verseg and Pantoja, the fact that he was able to not only survive, but arguably beat Pantoja, I think he'd destroy Mohamed Makayev. I would go Steve Verseg to beat Makayev on the feet, last on the ground because he's also a great grappler. I just I don't see a world where Makayev wins. So I would go with Steve Verseg by TKO in the fifth round, but that would be me. Matching up every single UFC champion, well, every UFC contender against the last contender. Let me know your thoughts on these matchups, if you would change any of the outcomes around. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching.